Hey gang, Diana here. Thanks for coming by and welcome to my studio. I'm going to be working with some with jelly plate printing today and this video is part of the Inspiration Conspiracy group uh, hosted by Shannon Green. I'll link everything down below and as you can see I have my jelly plate there out of the package and when you first pull that out you just make sure you um, save the clamshell packaging and take off the two pieces of plastic that are at the top and bottom of the jelly plate and the jelly plate is like um, I think it's kind of like the best description is that it's a jello jiggler and it's a thick gelatin type of substance and I have some golden paints out here um, just giving them a shake I've sped everything up because this video was really long and I got inspired from Jelly Arts blog uh, they had been making marks with folded papers so I got out my Martha Stewart score it board and made some there's my hands going crazy and I just thought they made some really nice marks. So I also wanted to mention that just because I'm using golden paints does not mean that you have to use them. You can use any kind of paint um, with this printing. And um, I've also used pigment ink and uh, I'm gonna actually link that video up in that right hand corner. You'll see that little eye. So here I am with my little fan squiggling along, pushing it around, and just generally making some little marks there in that, I believe that's dialeride uh, yellow. Um, I wanted to use the Hansa, no, I think it's Hansa medium. I wanted to use the Hansa light, uh, but picked up the wrong color. Best to start with these kinds of uh, printmaking or anything really is working from light to dark. So once that marks are made, just lay that on, t lay the paper on top and pull your first print. And then you can see that there's plenty of paper left over here. And I'm using some deli paper to pull another print and pretty much clean my my block off there. Um, and I have gel deli paper to the right and I'm cleaning off my brayer there as well uh, going in with some more dialeride and you'll notice that I am sort of rolling all over my plate but when you're rolling with a brayer roll and pick it up roll only in one direction or you'll wind up uh, picking up the paint if you roll it forward and then back your backward roll will actually re, uh, pick the paint back up and your aim is to get a nice smooth layer of paint. That's a, that was a lot of paint on that particular print. Um, it's kind of a, an art rather than a science to see how much, um, that's some nice marks there, how much paint you actually need. And again, I'm just cleaning my uh, plate off with the gel, uh, the um, deli wrap. And there I noticed, oops, I did use that darker paint and I'm throwing some white and just dribbling a little bit, getting a feel for how much uh, paint is actually necessary. This is an eight by 10 inch plate and um, I'm doing, I'm using Nina solar white uh, paper. I buy it by the big package because I do love this paper. I use it for card making, I use it for crafts, uh, I use it for jelly printing, it's nice for books. Not great for watercolor, but generally that's okay. I am planning to make a book. Oh, that got some really nice marks on that piece. I like that one. I am planning on making a book from this little session and um, so, I don't know, maybe if you want to play along with me, uh, maybe I might have made 10 pieces of paper. Now I'm putting down some teal and again some white uh, just to lighten that teal up a little bit and a squirt, squirt. And again, I uh, tend to, 
ignore everything my art teachers told me in printmaking and instead of doing it nice and neat I go all over the place like a uh, like I'm ice skating uh, but anyway it's <laughs> just as long as you try not to try to not go back after you go forward and um, I like this print too this this later is like this is that's one of my favorite prints I think and uh, lots of leftover paint and came up really clean too and some of these pieces will be great for printing on top of as you'll see as we go along here and um, oh, that looks good the teal with the yellow underneath of it uh, try to choose colors on the same side of the color wheel so that you don't wind up with mud on your first time out and here I'm using a a uh, wallpaper seam roller and with glued on foam craft foam and that's a self stick kind I just cut some pieces out I do have a video coming up a couple people asked me about roller stamps so I will be doing a video on that at some point and here I'm adding some acrylic that is um, Oh, what's it called? I'll link it down below. It's glazing fluid, glazing liquid, um, and it creates it creates a more transparent paint, and it also um, extends the open time. And here I'm using a roller stamp, again the seam roller with rubber bands wrapped around it. And um, as I recall, I think the first stamp, the first print was really cool. Uh, but I like the second one better and you'll find that a lot uh, yeah missed missed place that the first print is nice and you'll find that the second print or what they call a ghost print is sometimes you might like that better uh, I did with that particular print so I will link all of the um, supplies and materials I use down below the video along with the rest of the blog hop for inspiration conspiracy uh, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up pop over to my blog to see more ideas and comments and if you subscribe to me you'll you'll get a heads up on when that book binding tutorial comes up um, and here I'm just going through some of these uh, there's that acrylic that medium again and I did I really felt like I got some great prints from this about an hour session hour and a half uh, plus plus folding which took about an hour but uh, that was well worth it because I used cardstock and those little folded pieces will hold up for another uh, spree so don't forget to like share and do all that good stuff for me and I'll see you soon